Hello everyone and welcome to the third webinar in our series of short loan enterprise and loan cloud webinars this year. My name is Anders Nilsson and I'm the technical account manager for loan cloud and loan enterprise on SaaS. And we are in today's webinar going to look at the newly introduced Kafka protocol. And we're going to explain a little bit what it is and how you can create VueGen scripts using it and also what it looks like when you run a test using it from loan enterprise. And as usual, I'm going to start with a couple of slides first, and then I'll do a live demo around scripting and the running of the test. As always, our product management design our products based on feedback from our users. So if you have an ID or an enhancement request, please make use of the ID exchange to submit those, since this is where your peers then can vote for different IDs. And if it's a popular one, it might be implemented in a future release. So first of all, what is Apache Kafka? Uh, in their own words, it's an event streaming platform that is open sourced and distributed, and it's used for high performance data pipelines, streaming analytics, data integration, and mission critical applications. It is also being used by thousands of companies out there, including over 80% of the Fortune 100, covering a wide variety of industry sectors. So what can you do with it then? I mentioned that Kafka is an event-driven platform, so what is then an event? An event records the fact that something happened in the world of the application. And to track that at the basic level, each event has a key, a value and a timestamp. And there can also be more data attached to it, but these are the basics of an event. Also, an event can also be referred to as a record or a message in some documentation. So if we look at an example of an event, conceptually, it looks like this, where we have a key, which can be the name of whom or what did something, a value describing what they did, and a timestamp of when this event occurred. This event can then be coming from a number of different places, but they all fall, fall under the name of producers. So this can be data from different databases or metrics from monitors or IoT devices or even outputs from log files. But in general, anything that generates new data can be a producer. So what Apache, Apache Kafka then does is that it can capture and store these events. And by using something called consumers, we can then react to these events in real time and manipulate or process them as required. So if you, for example, have a consumer that is consuming real time stock market data, your application can then react to whatever happens on the markets in real time. So with Kafka, whenever you have anything that streams data, you can then set up a system that reacts to that data. So how do then the producers who publish or write events in Kafka and consumers who subscribe to or read events how do they communicate with each other? This is done through something called topics, which on a very simple level can be compared to being some kind of buckets. And the events themselves are what goes into the buckets. While each topic in Kafka can have one or more producers writing events to it, it can also have one or more consumers reading from a topic. And actually, a topic, a topic doesn't even need anyone writing to it nor reading from it in order to exist. But these topics are persistent, well, according to their configuration, and they can be read from as many times as you like without deleting the events, meaning that if you have a number of consumers reading the events, they won't interfere with each other. And since I mentioned at the beginning that this is all distributed, that means that the topics are partitioned and spread out over a number of different Kafka servers, which then also improves the scalability. All the topics can then also be replicated, resulting in making the data fault tolerant and highly available, so that if something goes wrong, it won't impact your data. But these are all Kafka topics that are a little bit outside of this webinar, so I won't go deeper into that. If we start looking at creating Kafka scripts, then the Kafka protocol was introduced in the UGN and the Lorem family in version 2022, where you then manually could write Kafka scripts. Then in version 2022R1, you can then also record Kafka scripts, which I will be showing here today. But in order to be able to run these scripts from LoadRunner, you need to have a license for the Java protocol bundle in LoadRunner Enterprise or a web protocol bundle license in LoadRunner Cloud. And having those licenses, you can then also run load tests using the Kafka protocol. 
For my demo here, I'll be using the Apache Quick Start Guide that shows you how you can quickly set up your own Kafka environment if you would like to play around with this. There are two major parts to it. You have to run something called Zookeeper, which is an application that is used to keep track of the different nodes and the status of them in the Kafka cluster. And it is also used to maintain a list of the different Kafka topics. While we're just running a single Kafka broker with a single partition and topic here in our demo, we still need a zookeeper. All of that is apparently about to change in some later versions of Kafka. So for my demo here, I've just followed the quick start instructions on the Apache Kafka homepage on how to set up the environment. And the first step is to start the zookeeper. And I've just put the instructions in an additional batch file. So I'm just going to start that up. And once that is running, we can then start the Kafka server. And now that is up and running, we have a fully enabled Kafka environment. So the first thing we're going to do here is to create our topic. And, uh, and the, that we will then both produce and consume from. So I'm just going to... So basically I'm calling a batch file uh, that's included in the Kafka where I create a topic and the topic called quick start events. And then I can make use of a uh, built-in producer batch file and then add events to that same topic. So I'm just going to copy that as well. And that then starts a producer file that will send items to the topic here. And if I'm then going to send an event here, I can just... But then of course, if we, we also want to see that it's actually added there. So I'm going to open up a yet another window here. And then I'm going to create a consumer here. And again, I'm using the built-in uh, batch files in Kafka to do that. So I'm basically saying that, hi, I'm a consumer and I will listen to the to a topic quick, quick start events. And we can see already it is the first event we put in there is registered there. And so basically we just tell it to list the contents of the topic from the beginning. So if we then add another event to the producer here, that will then also show up in the consumer. Like that. I can just close that one down. But uh, then also, as you remember, I said that each event had a key, a value, and a timestamp. So if we then instruct our consumer to list those items, so I'm going to close down the consumer here first. And then I tell it to list the events with the timestamps. We can then see that the, uh, in the output here that we do indeed have a timestamp and but that the keys we are adding or looking at are set to null and that is because we didn't enter any keys and also because we didn't instruct the producer to include any keys uh, so in order to do that we can then uh, restart the uh, producer here so i'm just gonna stop that yes and then i'm gonna start it up with some additional commands here and basically we're telling it to we're gonna we're gonna include a key here in our events so if I then add some more events here, and this one at this time, I actually include both a key and a value. So, I mean, they're both strings. So the, the key is a string called key one, and the value is then a value called value one. And we can see that it shows up here. So now we have a timestamp, we have our key, and we have a value. So if I add yet another one, that one will also show up here, as expected. So now we have all the items we mentioned that we have in event, we have a timestamp, we have a key and the value. So if we then would like to create a script against this topic, which we do in uh, Viewgen, so let me open that up. We select a new Kafka protocol script. And then we can go and press record here. So there are a few things we have to fill in first. So first of all, we need to have a configuration file and that is then done under the recording options and under then Kafka and the configuration files. And if you haven't 
the first time you do it, you just have to create it, give it, give it a name. And then there are a number of items that are you must, must have. And this is outlined in the online help as well. But the first thing you have to do is to just say, where is just a Kafka server hosted? And I'm running this on local host. And then you also have to have something called key and value deserializers. And as mentioned earlier, each event has a key and a value. And those are then stored as serialized objects in the Kafka server. So when we record those, we need to be able to deserialize them. So here we just let Viewgen know which serializer it should make use of. It is also important to notice that since my example is making use of text strings as a value, we, we then use a string deserializer. But it might also be that we are using some other type of input meaning that we might have to use a different deserializer type, for example, a long deserializer. And in the settings here, under code generation, you can also have Vue.gen to automatically insert a uh, consumer into the script that will then basically read back what we just written and verify that it worked. So that's the recording options, and they are those saved. And then we also have to list which topic we are listening to. So now it's pre-written here, but yeah, I can remove that and you just add whichever topic you want to listen to. But we have that one here. So we're just gonna start the recording here. And before I start to record my script here, so let me just bring that one in, is that uh, we need to revert back to the simple version of the producer where we don't include a key in there. So let's start that one up. Then now we send our first uh, event here. And we can see that the recorded events goes up. So let's send a second one here. And again, we see that the recording events go up and we see that the consumer also record those. And that's it for my simple script here. So I'm gonna, just gonna stop this one. And we can now see that we have our script generated here. So we can see that we sent two records here. So we have the first record here. Basically we say, see that this is what we sent here. And then we have the second event that we sent here. And then we can, if we wanna replay this, we can then go in and say, instead of recorded, we say replay and change that down here as well. And then if I go and uh, Play this. So it didn't complain about we don't have, haven't used a group ID here yet. And that is also one of those default values that you might have to include in the script. And you can, you can also have the properties in the config file we saw previously, but you can also enter them up here. So I'm just going to go in and do that here. And so here we will include a group ID as well. I'm just going to make sure that my consumer make use of the um, of this one as well. So yeah, like that. And then if we replay this now, so we can now see that Viewgen is acting as the producer and is writing events to Kafka, and those events are then picked up by the consumer. And so if we check that, we can then see that uh, our events are here as well. If we check the output in Viewgen, we see that the producer did his work, and then that the consumer in the script checked the number of events, and we did indeed find the expected two. If I now switch over to a VM here, where I have a local load generator running, I've also set up Kafka on this VM and I have a consumer reading back from our topic. So I'll be running our script from the run enterprise now. And if we quickly look at this script, I've also added two normal transactions here, so to say, uh, one for the producer and one for the consumer, so that those are measured as well during the load test. And if we look at the test itself, uh, I've just added our script here and I will be running it with 10 other users for a couple of iterations. All right, so let's kick this off. Mm -hmm. 
If we move over to the groups here, we can see that since I'm not using the scheduler, I can just manually start some of the users here. And now that we have all our Vettel users running, we can see that the transactions are coming up as well. And I'm going to move over to the graphs. We should see some details here soon. If we go back to the VM, we can then see that our script R is indeed producing the expected events here. So it's acting as a producer and this consumer here can then see the results coming out from it. And if we look at the graphs here, we have three different Kafka specific graphs here. And so we have the Kafka messenger rate, which then displays the number of events published per second the, for the producer rate and then events consumed per second, which is the consumer rate. We have the Kafka producer duration, which displays the response time in milliseconds between an event sent and a confirmation received each time the Kafka producer sends an event to the broker. We also have the uh, Kafka throughput, which then displays the amount of data in bytes that the producer published to, uh, so say the, the published throughput, or the consumer received from, which is the received, the received throughput, uh, then from the broker at any given time during the performance test run. And we can then see that we have the message rate here in this table here. We have the throughput and then we have the producer duration here as well. And we, of course, we also have a normal transaction response time. So we can see that the, uh, the consumer records can take up, some, up to some time here to detect that all have been sent. And the producer records are of course very quick, quick. And I'm just gonna let this test finish here now and then we can have a look at results afterwards. For results, we can of course download the raw results and uh, open them in the analysis as usual. Although you need to have analysis 2022 or later installed for the Kafka graphs to be available for you. So in here in the analysis, we have then the same three Kafka graphs that we saw previously. So let me open up them. And in here we same, have the same details that we saw in the uh, in lower enterprise and we can then of course also treat them as any other graphs we do in the analysis and uh, that then brings us to the end of this webinar and uh, what i wanted to show you here today so i thank you for your attention and i hope that this was beneficial for you thank you